Well, for a cylinder like this, it's fairly easy. You turn, turn the lathe on. Um, I keep my finger underneath the, the tool rest like that. And it's the depth gauge kind of thing. It's riding on this thing, keeping me consistent. Um, and then I wrap a couple fingers around there. Um, and <laughs> whenever I see beginners turning, they're standing too far away from the lathe. You really want to almost be leaning on the thing. Not leaning on it, but um, right up against it so that your, your weight is balanced on both of your feet. Take a wide stance and you can just drag this tool Make sure it's locked there. Along the so I'm going to go ahead and turn this whole thing down to the major diameter of my reamer blade. Um, so each cut is starting bevel rubbing, nothing's happening. I lift up slightly, right there it starts to cut, and now I drag that along and get my cut. Again, bevel rubbing, lift up, get my cut, go. Okay, still more to go. Find that place. Move it along. Got my elbows locked against my sides to keep this angle consistent. All the motion is coming from my feet. Getting close. One thing I should say is that with a roughing gouge, this always stays perpendicular there. Uh, you don't skew it like that at all. I guess you could, but I'm not. Okay, so that's close enough. We're not really too worried about that diameter. Um, let me go over here and grab a pencil. And um, it doesn't have to be, like, that diameter doesn't have to be precise, is I guess what I'm saying. Um, what we're gonna do is create it. It's a reference point to get our taper um, close. So I, while the thing's on, I can't see where the slot is. So I'm gonna make a mark on there that I will be able to see when I turn it on. And that'll tell me where that slot begins. Uh, so I can now um, start tapering it. Uh, and what I usually do, if I recall, I actually haven't made one this way in a few years. Um, I'm usually doing it on the pattern maker's lathe. Um, but I think I rough it down close and then use the parting tool. So let me do that. I'm just going to start at this uh, end where I have the most wood to take off and make a cut. Basically, I've got what I think is good, a six degree taper there. Uh, and now I'm going to start back further and keep that six degree taper working my way back up towards this pencil line that you can see there. Uh, so that's still six degrees. I've just made it longer now. Uh, if you want to check it, you can turn your lathe off. It doesn't matter if it's six degrees, but it's just this is the easiest way to get a lump free uh, shape. Um, but if you want to guess at whether it's six degrees, you can slide this down there. You can, actually, you can see I'm nowhere close. Um, I'm holding it flush on this side. Uh, see if I can do it for you all there. Uh, so I'm going to pivot this around. Wow. Nice and tricky there. So you can see that on one side I'm parallel and the other side I'm not, which means that I need to take more wood off of this end in order to get it six degrees. Um, so do that. Okay, so now I'm getting into the zone of being worried about hitting my uh, tail center. So I'm going to make a step there with the parting tool. So this is a parting tool. It's good for separating things, which we're about to do. 
um, and I'll use it to to sort of cut off the end uh, there. So I'll have a something that the the um, center can still dig into, but then it'll be smaller down in here. Uh, you want to start this cut far enough back from where that center is that the center is pushing on enough wood that it doesn't split off. So I'd say you want probably a quarter inch there uh, between the end of your blank and the side of your uh, parting tool. So um, I'm going to remove the cut there. Uh, so I'm leaving this and that. It'll become apparent in a minute if you can't see it. Uh, and again, same principle. This stays square here. Um, find that bevel, lift up. As I'm cutting, I can kind of twist my wrist a little bit, which will help that wiggle in and not jerk. Um, and then I can slide this over the top and go until it slips over. The bevel's rubbing the entire time on this cut. Starting to burn, so maybe I'll make it a little bit wider. Every time I do this, I feel like I'm digging China up here. There, finally. So, we need to take off all the wood that gets us down to a straight shot between the bottom of that part that I just made. 